Unless you're not under normal circumstances, you don't usually give your breathing much thought. I'm doing it right now without thinking about it whatsoever. But breathing is obviously really important because otherwise we don't get oxygen. Without oxygen, our muscles can't move. Why is oxygen such an integral part of why we are alive? That's what we're covering in today's video. Let's get started. When we breathe, our body uses the oxygen like this. It basically goes through the blood from the lungs and goes to our muscles. Our muscles use that oxygen to turn glucose, which is a type of sugar, into adenosine triphosphate, which is the fuel that our muscles use. Adenosine triphosphate is also known as ATP, and that's how I'll be referring to it in the rest of the video. ATP powers our entire body at all times, including our heart. That's why without oxygen, we can't do so well. Your blood circulates through your veins and arteries. Sometimes it's taking oxygen from your lungs to your muscles. Other times it's taking carbon dioxide that's excess from some chemical reactions back to your lungs to be breathed out. Out. What carries the oxygen is things called hemoglobin. Our body wants to have just enough hemoglobin to carry the right amount of oxygen, but without making the blood super thick and sticky. When you exercise in different ways, you get ATP from different sources. For about the first three seconds, ATP comes from within the muscles. Nothing needs to be created, it's just already there. For the next eight to 10 seconds, you use creatine phosphate. That creates ATP that your muscles can use right then and there. It's not sustainable though, because it can only be endured for about 10 seconds. For the next about two minutes after that, your body uses glycolysis. In that phase, glucose and glycerol are metabolized and they turn into more equivalents of ATP that can be used for fuel for your muscles. It's sustainable for about two minutes. So anything longer than takes about maybe two minutes and 15 seconds, you actually have to go into cellular respiration. However, that's not anything difficult to do. It's what we do all the time. It's breathing. When you start getting your energy from actually breathing, your body is getting the energy from synthesizing ADP and phosphate to ATP, which your muscles use as energy. This ADP comes from the glucose that we have either ingested or is already in our body by some other means. So what does this all have to do with skiing and Mount Bachelor and high elevation in general. Well, most of the air on the Earth is contained within the bottom third of the atmosphere. The closer to sea level you get, the more the air is compressed. Think about it like a gradient. Our atmosphere is going to stop somewhere, but there's no clear line, so it just gets thicker and thicker until we get to sea level. And once we get to sea level, it's at about 15 psi. Thicker air means more oxygen per breath. If you take a balloon that's inflated at sea level, and then you take it to somewhere where it's like Mount Bachelor, where it's at about 6,000 feet at the base, or 9,000 feet up at the top, the balloon's actually going to expand. This is because here at sea level, the air is actually pressing back on the balloon. However, when you go up high in altitude, there's less force pressing on the balloon, and so the balloon can push out with more force. Therefore, the balloon gets bigger. There are about 40% fewer oxygen molecules in a breath at 12,000 feet than at sea level. This is why athletes have to get acclimated to high elevation environments. One of these ways is by making more red blood cells. I recently took a trip to Mount Bachelor, which is around 6,000 feet where we were going to be. I was told to eat a lot, and since I was going to be exercising up there, I did. I definitely felt the effects of the elevation, but since I ate a lot, my body was more capable of producing more red blood cells, and therefore getting me more oxygen so that my muscles can work better. That's actually the best way to make more red blood cells if you're going to higher altitude. Make sure that your body is capable of doing that. Once your body realizes that something is different, then it will get working on its own. The second thing that we can do when we're exercising at higher altitudes is to drink things with glucose directly in it. This is actually true of exercising at all elevations. If we supply our muscles with glucose, that glucose can be converted into the energy that our body uses, which is ATP. If we have enough oxygen, that oxygen can help break down the glucose into ATP, and then we have more energy. Aside from making more red blood cells, our body adapts to elevation in other ways, including breathing deeper, forcing blood into arteries that aren't normally used, 
It also makes an enzyme that helps the release of oxygen into our muscles. After about 48 hours, our body will have done all of these things, and so we'll be more acclimated to the environment than before. So if you are an athlete and you have an event that's at high elevation, get there a few days in advance. That way your body will have acclimated and you'll be able to get more oxygen to your muscles and break down glucose into ATP more easily. Before we end the video, I'm just going to ask you to do one thing. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to, you can go ahead and click right, right here. My little icon should be there and it should show subscribe. If you click on that, you'll automatically be subscribed to me and that will help me because then I know that people are out there and they enjoy my content. That's really a big help with motivation for me because then I know that people are out there enjoying my content and so I feel more motivated to make videos. If you've already subscribed, Thank you, I really do appreciate it. But you could do one more thing just by sharing it with people that you think might enjoy my content and asking them to subscribe if they like it. If you do either of those things, make sure you comment about it below and I will make sure that I get back to you as soon as I am capable. That's all I've got for today's video. Until next time, thanks for watching.